Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to our metro build, something that's going to be a little bit different this time. So we've got most of the main structures in place, so we're on to sort of uh, creating the atmosphere and generally creating the look and feel that we're after now. So it's uh, a bit of a mishmash. First big thing that uh, I'm not happy with as is and I'm working on today is that uh, it feels a little too open and a little too spacious and I want it to feel a bit more claustrophobic. My first uh, thoughts and reactions weren't entirely convinced about whether or not I'd pulled off what I wanted to but I think if I carry on it should go the way I planned so this is a bit of a work in progress but it'll be uh, finished off before too much longer. So first things first we're going to use these junk walls along with the uh, rug and pillar together to close up the gaps in the side here and just narrow down this platform a bit. Much of the unfinished meat bags here start to get in the way, so a little bit of uh, adjustment required. And with the tyres on this particular wall and with the chain link bit on the left there as well, it's worth trying to avoid making it too obviously clip through. In this case I try to set it up so it looks like it's cut to fit rather than it's just clipping through the existing texture. This one's much simpler, although I will need to put something in there to account for the fact that that sort of uh, meat bag pole thing is not actually going to be there in the final version. Again, okay, we're running into the same problem here with this uh, only partially assembled meat bag, but short chain of rugs and that solves that problem. We've already got another one under here. One drawback to using the invisible rugs, let's try to find them. There we go. Now I'll spin it around. And the main reason I'm doing it from the back here is just because um, there's less stuff getting in the way in short. We've got the benches and the uh, meat bags and various other things in front that causing a bit of an issue but behind you haven't got that issue so makes life a little bit easier and there we go nice and easy so as I said last time I think I have been planning to turn these uh, remaining train cars into sort of sleeping quarters for people and whether or not they'll be family units or whatever I don't know but they're going to be very rough and ready my original plan was to try and fit a doorway of some kind uh, at either side of the entrance as you sort of see here but unfortunately there isn't really enough space to do that so it's a case of just sort of closing it off to create a, the illusion of a degree of privacy and separation even if not uh, actually achieving it entirely so as these curved wall pieces fit the cylinder of the train car quite well we'll uh, use these And the biggest trick here really was trying to make sure that I got them in so that they uh, left enough space to get through the gap in the middle and sat flush with the edge of the train car as well without clipping through too much, be sort of sticking out the sides and looking ridiculous. So it didn't leave a lot of room to manoeuvre inside, but it's the best uh, item we've got for the job. Unfortunately, we could, it would have been ideal to have something a bit narrower for uh, this end that leaves a larger gap, but. We make do with what we've got, so we'll just repeat that process all the way along, just using the uh, rug there as a group select anchor point, just to push everything a bit further back. And uh, In between the two train cars here, we're going to uh, close it off again, separate them out again. So we're just going to again group select two of these back to back, and it should fit quite nicely in the middle. And then. As the announcements have been suggesting since the get-go, you won't be able to pass between the train cars. So, just move them close together like that. Grab them with group select. Try not to run into the ones I've already put the hook in so far, and just drop it straight to place, nice and easy. I want to make my mind up on the positioning anyway. There we go. Looks pretty good from the inside. And it doesn't click through on the outside either. You have to take my word for that one. <laughs> so, a little bit of plywood there, keeping with what's already in place, just to uh, allow for slightly easier access to it. 
It would be more useful uh, if it was actually going to have subtler circuits. I'd be able to use invisible rugs to sort of fix a nav mesh and then uh, they'll be actually be able to walk onto the train. But as this is workbench anywhere, settlers are a no go, so we'll have to use our imaginations. Unfortunately, this uh, for some reason in this doorway it doesn't quite uh, line up with the platform edge, so it does further down. So a couple of planks underneath just stop the end of the plywood from floating there. We'll grab that bottom one; it acts just like the rug does for rug glitching as well, so it's nice and easy. And just to mix it up, we're going to stick some planks down over this bit here as well. and simple. Just one more so we don't fall down the middle. There we go. Always worth checking from both ends if you can. <laughs> so the next big thing I want to do is board up the windows, which I tried with the regular window boards, but they were too big, I think, was the main problem. They're just too tall. So they ended up clipping through all over the place with the cylindrical wall. So we're on... Uh, 90 degree angled planks from custom vanilla assets again. And this is the same technique I used last week to create the uh, lintel on the door frames for those shacks. The ones that I forgot to actually uh, show myself doing in the video. So it's just a simple case of group selecting them one on top of the other like that. And now we have our own set of boards. So I'll grab them with a the pillar and just move them into place. Unfortunately, again because of the uh, metal grill on the edge of the platform there and the curved edge of the train car as well, it's a bit temperamental on exactly where you can place the concrete pillar. So with a little bit of adjustment, I managed to uh, get everything to slot in okay. There. Doesn't look too bad from the inside, it needs to come in a little bit further. With the uh, inner wall being considerably thicker than the window frame is per se. We've actually got a bit more room to make sure it doesn't look too much like it's just clipping through. So I'll just grab the lock there, nudge them a little bit further back. There we go. Textures aren't quite ideal there, but they are improvising somewhat. But now we know it works, we can speed the process up and just create a double width one, double length one, however you want to look at it, and just move the whole lot in all in one go, nice and easy. Just get that lined up, try and make sure it's not clipping through too much. The top corners are the major issue there. Yeah, anyway, it's a little bit too high there. Looks like it's floating on the inside, so we'll pull it down a bit. So when we come to do the other side here, unfortunately, because the train's a little further away from the edge of the, for want of a better word, platform, um, we have some issues with getting the pillar to sink in down the, in between the gap, down in the gap there, that's what I wanted to say. So a little bit of conduit gives us a bit of extra reach, and we can use the platform edge then. And there we go, same principle all the way along. That's the windows all boarded up. I will need to decorate in there and put some furnishings in, but other than that, that's basically the gist of what I want to do there. So what I'm working on here will be, down at the end of the platform, uh, a kind of open air sort of uh, street cafe type affair. Where they'll uh, cook meat on a grill and then people can just sit at the counters and eat it right there. So, I'm going to get a bit of a countertop put in and uh, wall off the staff area using these junk walls again. I'm using the corrugated metal ones because it's going to have effectively a barbecue behind it, so, uh, well, wood would burn a little bit too quickly. There's the other one in. And we'll use a wooden half wall, one of the ones added by Yerso here just to uh, close up half of the gap here on the end. Just a little bit of rug and pillar, dead easy. So for creating the 
kind of counters. I want to do something a little bit different. Keep it looking fairly makeshift. Uh, not just use um, cafe tables or anything like that that I've used in the past. So These are uh, planks with nails in them, apparently. Uh, commonly used for bridges and walkways and that sort of thing, but they're about the right size, so just group select those in on the top. And now we have a slim counter for people to sit at. So repeat the procedure again around the other side. Nice and easy. And then we'll just need some means of support at the front. There we go. So we can use wire fence posts again, because they're pretty much the most versatile and match the textures again. And just group select them straight in underneath. Nice and easy on this one. The next one was slightly less cooperative, however. There we go. Just going on a bit of an angle here so we can get a bit closer to the wall. Yeah, a little curve at the bottom of the wall there does make things a bit more awkward. This one, as you can see, as I say, it gets a bit more awkward because you've got the bench in the way and that pile of viscera around the bottom of the new stand there that are preventing anything from sinking in. So, again, just grab a short length of conduit, go at a bit of an angle so we can uh, avoid the bench. And there we go, nice and easy. And same again on the other side. A little bit too close there, not quite a steep enough angle. There we go. So this is one of the few bits of decoration I've actually done so far and left in. Which I wanted to show you because I'm quite pleased with it actually. These greenhouse tables are going to form the basis for the barbecue. So we'll just Group select a couple of these together, fill the length of the gap there. And unfortunately, the ideal choice would be to use something like the fireplaces, the uh, campfires, but as they're far too big to do the job, we'll have to improvise a little bit. So, here's our improvised little campfire, and inside the custom vanilla assets mod, there are some invisible sort of plant pots that serve to put various special effects in. But, um, an obvious point of origin, one of those being little uh, fires. So I will group select a couple of those in underneath as well and hopefully it should make the uh, little stacks of wood here look like they're actually burning. So is that is the theory anyway. So on to the really big bit. Down at this other end where we put the shacks in last time, I'm quite happy with the look of the shacks but the area as a whole is said before far too open not nearly as claustrophobic as I wanted to feel so I'm going to move in some of the double height junk walls to try and close it off a little bit unfortunately courtesy of uh, the scrapping rod scrap that conwell being a bit awkward this is not as easy to do as I might like so these are floor textures are actually um, sort of retextured rugs designed to put make floors look different but they work the same way as the rugs so we'll set them down in a chain like this as we'll have to rug glitch everything in we'll do it all in one go because it's much easier than trying to do it piece by piece as we'll see a bit later so we've got I think four of the uh, trunk fences here hop over the top here now I've got to try and get it lined up with the back of these shacks and the edge of the platform without really being able to see what we're doing, which is challenging to say the least. In short, it comes down to a lot of patience and adjusting and checking and adjusting. So as you see there, it's still clipping right through the shacks there. As well. So not that far off. We can just sort of see down the line of it here. But it will need a bit more adjustment, so we'll do that. One issue I did have was that when it came to re-select sort of group select the rug using the pillar, half the time it didn't seem to want to re-select the rug and just selected everything in the vicinity, which was 
not good. So a little bit of adjusting of the height of the concrete pillar and moving it around a little bit. And eventually, it did what I wanted it to. Yeah, that's a little better. Some of a bit of work. Just see it clipping through inside there. So again, it's just and adjust and adjust. And if you need to, you can always stop, come back out of the game, disable the mod, double check, and then see if you've got it lined up. We're going to skip over a lot of repetitive fiddling around. As you'll have the idea now, you can see, we've got them just about in place. However, we've got the one gap here that I could have done with uh, putting that extra wall on for in the first place, but fortunately I forgot. So, we'll have to do this last one separately. A little chain of rugs, just because it's uh, a very narrow gap that we're going to have to try and get the pillar into, which makes things really awkward, which is, again, the major reason I wish I'd done it the first time rather than having to add this one in after, but we'll get there in the end. So it's a case of adjust the pillar, test, adjust the pillar, test, until you find some way you can get the thing in that's as close as possible to where you want it to be. As I said, it takes a bit of fuffing around, but we'll get there eventually. So it needs to be a little further over there. Jump over the debris because we can't actually get through this gap very easily anymore. And that should be about the right place. And I'm trying to line it up with both sort of the edge of the platform that you can see in the bottom right corner and use the supports to line up with the existing supports to try and get them in about the same position, which is easier said than done. Once we get the thing pushed far enough forward and then lift it up to the right height, it does line up pretty well, but it's as I say, a lot of fiddling around, trying and trying again until you get it right. So it's not a bad start there. Have a quick look. Still a bit too low and way too far over to the right though. So now we've got to push it a bit further up. And then manoeuvre the pillar over to the right a little bit. Nudge the whole thing back to the left again. And repeat. Because we've got such a small gap to work with. And uh, yeah, this took far too long really. It was a total pain, but through the wonders of cinema or YouTube or something to that effect, we can uh, cut out a lot of the faffing around. And there we go. It's more or less what it should look like. So, I'll take a quick look around the, if not finished product, the stage we're at at the moment. Obviously, that wire will be coming out. So I've group selected a door into the end there as well. Interestingly enough, it looks like it's been updated because the reflection in the window there actually reflects the uh, room behind it now. So it's more of a, a window than a mirror now. Because as before, it was just reflecting wherever the uh, or original item was taken from. Which is a bit weird when you looked up close. And there we go. We're a little more partitioned off and it's feeling a bit more enclosed down here now. Looks much better now we've got the train car out of the way. So I wasn't quite sure at first whether or not that was what I wanted to go with. I wasn't sure if it was going to look right. and But once I decorate it, I think it should look suitably scrappy and like it's been there all along. And I think I will probably continue the same principle along down the side of the rest of the train car as well. That will be a lot easier. So it's not uh, up on the platform further down. There we go. See, it's actually showing the right image now, as before it wasn't. Or in the past, I should say. So now we've got access to this place, I'm actually going to move the doctor's surgery that we've got on the platform in here. Partly because that chemistry station's already here. Partly because it just kind of suits the vibe a bit more. And this little train car here, I've now sealed off that end, and we'll make this the doctor's living quarters. There we go. Just needs a little bit of decoration in there and it should be fine. And I think I'll turn the currently existing doctor's office into a... probably a clothing store or something like that, I think. Should be easy enough to fit a few racks of stuff in there. So you need to put a lot more debris around and junk and stuff just to make the place look a little bit more permanent and lived in and create the final effect. 
I'm going to take a look down the inside of the train cars as they are for now. Unfortunately, it seems I haven't quite got this staircase right here, so I'm going to put a little something underneath so we just cruise on up it. There we go, nice and boarded off. Be a tiny bit warmer, if nothing else, that way. A little bit more privacy, or at least, the, as I say, the illusion of it. Again, I'll put some more decoration in here and a bit more, a few bits and pieces around to make it look more lived in. Figure everybody will be sleeping on the sofas there, or the seats, I suppose. A little narrow, but that'll do the job. Quick look down the back so you can see it from there as well. And I haven't done a great deal more decoration down here. I've closed off this area a little bit more just to make it feel, maybe to say, a lot more of a confined claustrophobic space. But this little uh, street cafe type thing is, looks. You can see where it's going, where it's headed for the moment at least, anyway. Obviously, I've pulled off a lot of the rubble and debris that's on the platform as well. So it just didn't leave it looking like a, a place somebody actually lives. And for now we've got the gap where the generator is because uh, I will probably need access to that later on. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a balance of trying to get enough debris and rubbish around to make it look the way I want it without making it look so trashy that uh, it doesn't actually look lived in, just nearly destroyed. So a little bit of work will get the balance on that. There we go. Everything's starting to come together now. But for now, thank you very much for watching as always. If you enjoyed, I'm sure you know what to do by now. Social media links are down in the description. And I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.